Hey, what is it guys? Welcome to the Friday video where I get to do pretty much anything I want. So, um, this week I've got a request on Facebook uh, via the Facebook page that asks for this kind of effect they have when you press on, uh, say, an icon, it gives you gold. And then that gold, you see it in the screen and then it goes towards your gold bag slowly. So let's just imagine that um, over here my logo is would be like a gold button or, you know, like a gold icon. And my bag of gold would be at the very top right. Then the simple effect we're going to achieve is just get this image to scale and position itself somewhere here and then we can destroy it, then we can do a fade on opacity, but uh, since it's my logo I just decided to leave it here because you know, hey, free advertisement. And here is another example of it right here at the top. That's the gold icon and it just simply goes down. Now I'm also going to add like an amount to that to so say, oh you've won one gold and it's going to do a little bit of shining effect on it. But, you know, just bring the attention to that and then it goes down uh, somewhere where I don't see it anymore. So guys, that is what we're going to be doing today and uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. So as always, let me present you the setup we have currently. It's the same setup as um, last uh, last Friday, so basically I'm, I'm using the same exact scene. Um, but we've added one more thing. We've added this logo here, which I've called Image to Move. And it's pretty much, like I said, the same exact thing. So the buttons over here, they, they work the way they used to work last episode. But we have one more image here. And we also have one more script that is empty right now. And um, I'm going to just show it to you. It's basically this. It's a wonderful script, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so today what we're going to do is something I am going to call deposit effect. Because I really don't know uh, what else to call it. And I didn't really find a name. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, call it deposit effect. And I will go ahead and just put this empty script right now, the script that has nothing in it, on my object I want to move. So here it is. Now the first thing I'll define is um, I'll define a public transform. And this is going to be my desired transform. So here's what we have. We have a transform that is 250, um, 215 width, 215 height. And it just it's right there. It has its own position. I manually just position that somewhere. But I like to have um, the ending point defined. So here is what we're going to do. We're going to create a new, well, we could just be duplicating that. Duplicate image to move in my case. And this is now going to become the desired transform. And uh, with, this, with this effect, I'd like to just take my logo and just put it somewhere. Um, either left side or right side. Right side would be cool. So somewhere around here. And I'd also like to scale it down. So we could be just clicking on it and then it just goes at the very top here. Or it could even be destroying itself or moving out of the frame. But I'll just leave it here. And I'll actually just turn the image off so I don't I don't see it. And also remove the deposit effect. This one doesn't need it. What we're going to do now is take this image to move. Drop in the desired transform in the desired transform field. And we're going to go ahead and just try our best to um, make this assume this position in a update. Which is fairly simple. So we're going to need a few fields to keep track of that. Um, the first one is going to be the private transform. My transform, which we don't really need. We could be using the um, normal just transform with a uh, non-capital T. But it's good practice to have it here. So private float um, transition. And what else do we need? I think that's going to be pretty much it for now. All right, so let's do a private void update. Now here's what we're going to do, so um, we need to keep track of how long, well we need to know first how long is that animation going to be, so as soon as say we click on our object, as soon as we tell our object, okay now you move, how long is it going to take for that object to go from where it is to the desired transform position? Let's just say it's going to take um, two seconds for the sake of this tutorial. So what we, what we do is really simple, so first we're going to need to actually take our current transform, so my transform, which is right now set to null. So let's go and do a private void start and say my transform is equal to transform. So we're going to be taking that transform and then we're going to say dot um, anchored position. Now that's where it gets weird a little bit and um, I've made a mistake. So we don't really need the transform since we're playing with UI and canvas. We, what we really want is actually the rec transform. So um, our code is going to change a little bit. So my transform is actually equal to get component rec transform. Just like this. And now 
my transform is now a rec, compo uh, a rec transform which has the anchored position field to it and that's going to allow us to move it on that uh, canvas plane instead of moving it inside of the 3D world. Well, I mean, it's still in the 3D world, but we're not using like, the same coordinate systems. So my transform anchored position is going to equal, and now we're going to be finding, we're going to be finding um, where exactly you are during that transition. And the way we do this is I'm going to use a slurp. So a vector 3 dot slurp from the start position, which is not set yet, and the second um, vector is going to be desired transform that position and finally the float we still don't have that yet let's put in um, transition okay so what are you missing here we're missing the first vector so the start position of our object that we're also going to need to keep um, keep track of it so we're going to do a private vector 3 start position and we're going to say start position is equal to my transform anchored position. So we got to be make sure, making sure that we have the um, the actual rec transform so we can call anchored position and not the normal dot position. With that um, start position in mind we can put it here and we end up with something like this which is going to um, give us really nothing right now because we never really increment that transition float. Let's actually just say transition plus equal and then we'll do um, time the delta time divided by three. So over the course of three seconds, we're going to be moving from start position to the desired transform dot position. Let's have a look at this. It should actually give us something working right now. And as you can tell, we do get that movement. So it goes from the start position to the desire desired position. But there's a lot of like messy thing going on here. So we need to fix pretty much everything. We are going to start with the scaling. We also want to be scaling this from, um, you know, the initial transform scale to the desired transform scale. So we're going to keep track of that as well. Let's do a private vector three start scale, and we're simply going to, going to go down here and just say start scale is equal to my transform dot local scale. I think it is. Yep. All right. And now just after saying my transform dot anchored position is equal to something, we're gonna say my transform dot local scale is equal to a vector three. This time we're gonna do a lerp. Or we could do a slurp, but let's actually just mix them up a little bit. So we're gonna do a lerp with the start scale and also the desired transform dot local scale. And the transition float is going to be transition. Alright, let's give this a look. And we end up with something like this. And now, if you notice, it actually does like a curved shape, and that's because we're using a slurp here. If you don't really like that, you can be using a normal lerp, and it's going to be like a super linear line in between this point and that point. But right now, we're doing a slight curve that goes up, then slides, and just goes there. We could also be moving this image to move um, this desired transform if you don't really like it. Put it somewhere here. And we end up like this. So um, something else we could do is actually control the speed at which it goes, but um, actually decide, say you, you give it a small burst of speed at the very beginning and then it slows really, really slow when it gets close to the end or something inverse. So it really moves slowly from the start and then moves super fast to the end. We can be doing that by adding a animation curve. And those are quite fun to be honest. I, I'm, I'm just like starting to mess around with them and I'm enjoying quite a lot. So let's go ahead and just declare a public animation curve and let's call it something like um, transition speed. And now what we do is where we do transition is plus equal to time. We declare another float. So float t is equal to transition speed, which is our animation curve dot evaluate. And we evaluate at transition. And now in our lerp and slurp function, we're going to be putting our new float. Okay, so let me show you how this works. So basically we've made this public so we can manually just modify it. And let's go on our image to move. We now have this nice, really nice graph. And we have a graph that goes from um, one here to one up there. Now that's pretty much 
what we want here. So uh, we're going to choose a pre-made graph, so maybe this one. And if we follow this graph, our animation is going to start really slowly and then go super fast in the middle and then end up really slowly. Now it's really up to you what you want to do with that. I'll just, um, I'll just start mine really fast and end it really slowly. Let's have a preview of that. And as you can tell, it does this nice animation here. All right. Now, what do we want to do if we actually just want to remove this at the end? Well, we could actually be keeping track of the transition float because we know that if transition is bigger than one, that means our animation is completed. Technically, it means that our animation is completed. So at this point, we can be saying um, destroy game object. Just like this. Now you could be making a fade after that, so an opacity fade or you know something like that. But as soon as it hit one, it is pretty much being destroyed. But I like mine quite a lot where it is, so I'm not going to be destroying it. I've removed the destroy call, but uh, something else I'm going to do is just take this start function and put it inside of a button instead. So I'll do a public void um, start animation. So as long as it doesn't have like the start name in it, so it's not being called from Unity, it's actually going to be called from me, then we can actually roll with that. I can actually plug that inside of a button. However, if I do this, then um, update is still being called by Unity, and now it's using all of these fields that are not going to be defined then. So I'm going to add a bool in here, so a private bool is animating, and by default it's equal to false, and my start I'll do is equal to true. Now, if is animating is equal to false, we do a simple return just to handle the crash here. At this point, nothing should happen anymore. And there we go, so everything is just stable. Now, let's just assume I click on that button in the middle, let's say this one. I'm going to plug my function in there, so I'll just take my image to move, deposit effect, and where is my start animation? There it is. Alright, so now everything is super cool. We go here, we go here. Now we click on that. It's going to start animation and go right in the corner. And we end up with some kind of result like that, which is just looking fine. Now, I've also implemented it in my game that I'm making right now. And um, I see it in a lot of places. I see it in games where you just click somewhere and it gives you, say, an amount of gold. Now, um, whenever you click, there's like this little pop-up. You have your gold, and then it goes right next to your gold amount. So it pretty much just tells the player, okay, you've just uh, collected this thing, and then it's showing you it's the way to actually see where that, that gold amount is being displayed, or something of the sort. And um, here's what I have did for mine. I didn't really like put it here in my, in my bag of gold, but it pretty much just starts from the top over here, and then it goes down, and that's it. Something simple like that, but it's moving the screen and it's giving the player some kind of feedback at the end, which is something that is always required when you're making like these mobile games, or any games really. Just The more feedback you have, the more pretty it looks. So guys, that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you learned something, and if you did, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that. It helps out the channel a lot. And um, check out the Patreon page if you wish, that would be amazing. Subscribe for more, and comment in the comment section below. All that kind of stuff. Alright, I'll see you next time.